Hey, Keeks here, and in Season 2 of The Mandalorian, we see Ahsoka interrogating a woman at the Magistrate, Morgan Elsbeth, I think her name is, and she's asking her where Thrawn is. And we believe she has ties to Thrawn because a big factor is that her droids have the Imperial 7th Fleet logo, which was Thrawn's fleet when he was part of the Empire. But at this point, I don't think that a lot of people actually know who Thrawn is. If you didn't watch Rebels or read any of the previous prequel books, then you probably are kind of wondering who this guy is. And we see Ahsoka interrogating this woman, and we know she is a Jedi-ish. Uh, so we kind of always place her on the good side, which would mean that Thrawn would be placed on the villainous side. But is Thrawn actually evil? Well, this is supposed to give a little backstory into Thrawn, and if you don't know who he is, then this will show you the complex character that Thrawn has, and why he lies so hard to place on the morality spectrum in the Star Wars universe. Thrawn was first introduced into Star Wars canon in the Star Wars Rebels TV show, and in this show, they showed him only as the Empire hunting the Rebels. Then we got some books that came out after that, and it showed more of Thrawn's time in the Empire and when he rose through the ranks. Those would be Thrawn, Thrawn Alliances, and Thrawn Treason, which all talk about his time in the Empire. And then after that, we got three more books called Thrawn Ascendancy, Thrawn Lesser Evil, and Thrawn Greater Good. And those really focus on his time before he ever gets to the Empire, and while he is a military commander in the Chiss military, which are his people. And the Chiss are the blue ones like Thrawn, and they reside in a system that's completely outside of the Republic or even the Empire, really. While the first three books and Rebels give you an awesome idea at his tactical genius and how fun he is to watch when he's really thinking things through and understanding his enemy and things like that, the prequel series about him in the Chiss Ascendancy does a fantastic job of giving him a more well-rounded character and giving you a better understanding into his motives. One of the big things that they talk about in these books is that the Chiss never actually preemptively attack anybody. They always wait to be attacked first, and Thrawn lies very heavily on the other side of that, where he believes that you shouldn't wait for someone to be strong enough to actually take you on when they're clearly gathering strength in front of you. You should just go hit them first and kind of neutralize the threat before it ever gets there. That creates a lot of friction within the Chiss Ascendancy, but it gives you a good perspective as to how he constantly disobeys orders in order to protect his people even better. He is someone that is, as you can tell from the names of his latter two books, Greater Good and Lesser Evil, we know that he is willing to sacrifice and he doesn't really, he, he thinks of things in a line of, I will easily sacrifice a thousand people to save a billion people. And he wouldn't think twice about a situation like that. So he gets a hard rap because it's kind of harsh, but I mean, he is a realist and he does whatever is logically the best to save the whole of the Chiss Ascendancy. But he is fiercely loyal to the Chiss Ascendancy and like, everything he does is to protect them. To Thrawn, he'll view everybody as either an asset or a liability. And don't get that confused with ally or enemy, because he will 1000% use his enemies as assets, where he knows that they will react certain ways if he does certain things, so he will prompt that, and he considers them assets because he can manipulate them into doing exactly what he wants. So it's not necessarily ally or enemy, it is assets and liabilities, and anyone he believes will be a means to an end he will use. In the prequel books, they introduce this navigator character, and this character is clearly working with the enemy of the Chiss, and they think they're spying on Thrawn, but Thrawn is very well aware of what's going on, and he feeds this person information constantly to either throw the 
enemies off his trail or just kind of slightly subvert what he's actually doing and really trying to trick people into kind of thinking different things. Often, Thrawn would rather capture everybody rather than kill them, so if he can think of a way to capture them, because he thinks almost every creature has some sort of intelligence that could be gained if he captured them, which, ironically, is kind of also against the Chiss people's policy, because they're allowed to, if they're attacked, attack back, but there's a little bit of gray area with if you attack them back and neutralize them, can you take them hostage? Because he does that, and... Then he gets in a lot of trouble for that because, yeah, you're allowed to retaliate and get out of the situation, but you shouldn't be... They they view capturing as going on the offensive, which the Chiss do not want to do. One of the things that really makes me think that Thrawn isn't evil is from the book Thrawn Alliances. And in this book, there's a flashback in that book where Thrawn is helping out Anakin Skywalker. And they're on this planet doing different things and they meet up and decide to team up and help each other essentially to get each of their respective missions done because they're both on their own missions on this world. Thrawn ends up completing his mission and in the middle of a fight essentially he leaves Anakin to kind of fend for himself and he goes away. Anakin's pretty pissed about this. But Thrawn completed his mission, and he went to save the Chiss. And essentially, after he did that, though, he came back to help Anakin. And this just, to me, proves that he'll do anything to protect the Chiss' ascendancy. And he does. And that's always his number one priority at all times. Nothing will really get in the way of that. But at the end of that, after the Chiss have been protected, he understands that while he might not be an ally of the Republic and Anakin Skywalker, it's good to have him be an asset and not a liability if they ever encounter it again. He sees these benefits to being part of the Republic, and if the Republic isn't a threat to the Chiss, then Thrawn has no reason to attack them ever. He wouldn't just maliciously go out of his way ever to attack these people if they were not already planning some kind of rebellion or that's a bad word, but planning some kind of assault on the Chiss people. I mean, he might have thought differently once he joined the Empire, which I think he did. Once the Empire, he thought, okay, now that they're around, they're trying to take over all these galaxies, so I'll join them in efforts to steer them away from the Chiss and make sure I keep my people safe still. Because once he figured out that this people, or the Emperor, I should say, do to have a like desire to take over the Chiss, then that's when he intervened. But he really did not do that until he was forced to, which again leads me to say that I don't think he is evil. I think he is just protecting his people. So Thrawn ends up siding with the Empire to kind of steer them away from the Chiss, and that to me, I think, would make him in his people's eyes a hero. To the Chiss people, Thrawn is a hero, and he is kind of a hero to the Empire, too, which we view as villains because generally in Star Wars, we look at it from the Rebellion's side and we think, okay, well, if they're fighting the Rebellion, they're bad people. But I really think that he is maybe a villain to those people in the Rebellion because he's so good at his job and squashing rebel forces and just being generally a good commander and, or I should say, Admiral, Grand Admiral. And he's so good at that that they hate him for it. But I don't think he's doing it, again, maliciously. I think to his people, he would be regarded as a hero. At the end of Star Wars Rebels, Ezra Bridger, who is a young Jedi, and Thrawn end up kind of getting taken out into space deep space and never to be seen from again. So presumably, I believe that scene with Ahsoka interrogating the magistrate looking for Thrawn, she's looking for him, yes, but if Thrawn was able to make it back from deep space, it's pretty like logical to assume that Ezra was as well. So I don't think she's really looking for Thrawn. I think she's looking for Ezra and Thrawn is a means to that. I would guess that Thrawn and Ezra had to form some kind of alliance using each other's skill set to really get back safely. But the thing I don't understand is if they're back, then why wouldn't Ezra have reached out to Ahsoka some way? But I guess we will 
wait till the Ahsoka series comes out to get those questions answered because I think I'm getting a little ahead of myself uh, with that question, line of questioning. So no, Thrawn is not evil. Is he a good guy? Eh, that's debatable, but he is not evil. He doesn't go out of his way to make people suffer. He likes understanding them, and if people cannot save their own art, he doesn't want that to get lost to history, so he saves it for them. But I think he is ruthless, no doubt, and will do whatever he can to really accomplish his goals, but I don't think he's evil. And my biggest hope with the Disney Plus series is they are almost undoubtedly going to introduce Thrawn into it, and I really hope they keep that sense of morality in that gray area. I think Disney has struggled with that previously with a few other characters, and Boba Fett is just going to say he should have been a little more in the uh, gray area and the anti-hero. Not maybe a villain, but, you know, just kind of a, an anti-protagonist. Um, but I think that would make a way better place for Thrawn. So I just hope they don't go full villain with him because it is easy to do with him and he's such a good villain because he's so good at his job and he's ruthless. So it's easy to make him a villain, but I hope they keep true to his personality and characteristics that we have learned through Rebels and more importantly, the book series that's come out relatively recently. I hope I was able to clarify Thrawn as a character better for you and you now have a better understanding of the Star Wars universe, why Ahsoka is looking for him, and if he's a bad guy. You know, I'll leave it up to you now to decide what, what do you think? Is he a bad guy? Is he a good guy? Is he a villain? Is he a hero? I think to different groups he could be classified as all of those. But for now, I'm Keeks. I hope you've enjoyed this and stay tuned for more Star Wars content.